Hello, it's your here. Welcome to another episode of BizJet TV. Today I've got a great episode for you, uh, which has been suggested uh, by one of you and uh, that have watched the video, the three financial aspects of private jet ownership, where I did uh, do a bit of a comparison, uh, doing an analysis for uh, one of you uh, that was commenting on uh, what the difference was for somebody that was going to be buying a private jet for leisure purposes and not for business purposes. Um, so I ran through some numbers there uh, and some comparisons. And so somebody wrote to me saying, well, what about the, the large VVIP uh, private jets? When is it convenient to buy one of those instead of one of the long range private jets? So hence uh, the episode for today is about VVP airliner versus uh, the large private jet. And so for exercise purposes, I chose the Boeing business jet um, and we're going to look at the Global 6, uh, 650ER and the Bombardier Global 7500. So we're talking about these three aircraft, the differences and whatever, and when is it more convenient to, to buy the, the VVIP aircraft or the, the, um, the, the long range private jet. So lots of interesting content in this episode. Now we're going to get straight into it. But if you haven't already subscribed to BizJet TV, I encourage you to subscribe to this channel and also give us a thumbs up and comment below. But let's go straight in now to talk about VVP airliner versus uh, the large private jet. Off we go. So for this exercise today, we're going to be looking at three aircraft. Uh, we're going to be looking at the Boeing business jet based off of the 737 airliner. The BBJ-1 is the most popular, which is based off of the 737-700, which is the shorter version, not the 800, which carries 189 seats. Um, and then we're going to be looking at the Goldstream G650ER and the Global 7500 built by Bombardier. Now, I just chose these three just to give you an example here, because uh, those of you that are watching, uh, you know, thinking of shall I go out and buy a VVIP airliner or shall I buy a long range business jet? Um, what is uh, what, what are the numbers? What what's the convenience? What are the advantages of these various airplanes? Now, um, if we take range, um, the BBJ has a range of just under 6000 nautical miles. We've got the Goldstream G650ER, which has got 7,400 nautical mile range, and the Global 7500, which is 7,700 mile range, even though they did manage to fly 8,100 nautical miles on a trip, uh, but they were particular circumstances with a, with a tailwind and not much of a payload. Um, so we just call it 7,700, which is the official number. So out of the three, the one with more range is the Global 7500. Now, of course, when you're operating a Boeing business jet, uh, the great advantage of the Boeing business jet is, of course, the cabin. We're talking 5,396 cubic feet of space compared to the Gulfstream G650R, which has got 2,421 cubic feet. And then we've got the Global 7500, which is slightly bigger, at 2,685. So where the BBJ is a lot bigger, and that's the reason why you would go for this type of aeroplane, uh, and then between the G650 and the Global 7500, the Global 7500 has a larger cabin. Now, if we look at the variable costs to operate these airplanes, uh, we've got $7,500 an hour for the BBJ, $4,545 for the G650ER, and $4,596 for the Global 7500. So the Global 7500 and the G650ER are pretty much the same on the variable costs. The fixed costs will depend a lot on, uh, on, uh, on a number of factors. Um, of course, the advantage of buying a Boeing business jet is the pilot training is very cheap. I mean, a tight rating for a pilot, it, you can get anywhere between ten dollars to $15,000 just for one pilot on the BBJ. While if you're looking at the G650ER, uh, we're talking $80,000, dollars and on the Global 7500, almost $120,000 to qualify one pilot. Um, the reason being that the uh, qualification of the BBJ is basically a 737 type rating. And because there are many Boeing 737s flying around the world, there are many flight simulators. And so obviously the cost to manufacture these simulators and operate them is a lot lower than that on the private jets. So you'll find that your training for your crew is going to be a lot more expensive on the private jets than on a VVIP airliner. And also if you are going to be looking for pilots that are experienced on type of course there are many 737 drivers out there but the airline guys don't necessarily translate well into the corporate jet environment you have to find the right 
type of person and that's really really important doesn't mean that they can't work and that there's I mean I, I, I've done both and I've got lots of friends of mine that have, have done both and ideally that's what you want you want somebody that's got airline experience or military experience and also private jet experience because they just bring both of the best of both worlds together um, and that's ideally what you want so that's the cost the other in, important factor to look at is the speed now the BBJ flies at a speed of about 445 knots compared to 488 knots, uh, which is the, the, the speed for the G650R and also the Global 7500. So you've got 10% more speed. So on a 10 hour flight, you're gonna get, get in an hour earlier if you're flying on the Goldstream G650ER or the Global 7500 compared to the BBJ. The other factor which is important is that the BBJ will fly at around 35 to 37,000 feet while the G650R and also the Global 7500 can go straight up to 47,000 feet, um, even 49,000, sometimes even 51,000 feet. So it's way above the weather and also way above the traffic. So we have to look into that because uh, on the speed, it will beat the BBJ, but also it will beat the BBJ on another factor, which is uh, fighting the weather and also the traffic. So being able to go up high, you can avoid all the bad weather and you also avoid most of well, all the airline traffic, basically, and you can get direct routing. So while you get in an hour earlier because of the speed, you may even get it get in an hour and a half, maybe an hour 45 earlier because you're avoiding weather and you're avoiding the traffic. So even slots and things like that slots. Um, you get a departure slot, you get an arrival slot, but you also get slots based off of the airway you, you'll be flying. So obviously if you're flying transatlantic, there's a lot of aeroplanes flying these routes transatlantic. And so they have to slot you in at 37,000 feet with all the Lufthansa's and the Virgin Atlantic and the United Airlines aeroplanes. Well, if you're flying on one of these private jets, you shoot up to 47,000 feet. There's probably another two or three jets up there instead of 30 or 40 jets. So there's a lot more space. So you won't be subject to slots like you do on the BBJ. Um, other factor is cabin pressurization. You know, I've talked about that a lot. Um, this is something that a lot of people don't think about. Uh, but if you're going to be sitting in an airplane for 10 hours, uh, that's a long time. One of the reasons why uh, people are tired when they get off a long flight is, yeah, the jet lag does play into it, but it's also the pressure in the cabin. Most airliners are pressurized at 8,000 feet. On the BBJ, you can get a special kit which brings the pressurization down to six and a half thousand feet, which is really good. But if you're flying on the uh, Goldstream G650, the pressurization go down to 6,000 feet. And on the Global 7500, because it's newer technology, the pressurization come down to four and a half thousand feet and sometimes even to 3,800 feet, depending on what flight level you're flying at. So having the cabin pressure 2,000 feet lower than the BBJ on a 10 hour flight, when you get off that flight, you're going to be a lot more rested. And this is really, really important. So um, should you buy a BBJ or even an Airbus corporate jet or a Lineage 1000? All three of these uh, VVIP aircraft are based off of airliners. And that's what they do. And I didn't bring in the ACJ or the or the, um, the Lineage 1000 in, into this video because I just wanted to keep it simple. Um, the costs are pretty much there anyway. But uh, it's, you know, the, and I know the dilemma because I get this with clients all the time. Should I buy a G650R or a BBJ? Um, and it really, at the end of the day, is down to the cabin. If you want that large cabin to walk around and you know, sleep in a bed, which you can do on the G650R and that, but you know, in the BBJ, you have an actual bedroom. Um, and that's what they've tried to do with the Global 7500. And I think the Global 7500 is going to eat a little bit into the BBJ market. But, you know, some people just want the BBJ. And also, you know, on the Boeing business jet, let's face it, you can sit 14, 15, 16 passengers very comfortably on a 10 hour flight. I mean, putting, you know, 14 passengers on a Global 7500 for a 10 hour flight, it's going to be a bit cramped. Usually most of these private jets fly. I mean, the, the average is 3.8 passengers per, per flight. Um, and certainly my experience on flying long haul on the Falcon 900, we had sometimes just one passenger. Uh, average, it was about three to four passengers per flight. Uh, and that's what you usually get on these private jets. But if you have, you know, a large team, and this is why a lot of governments like the BBJ or the ACJ, because they're always flying with 15, 20 people. Some of these governments go 
out and buy a 767 or a 777 VVIP or an A350. And I've covered that in other videos. So you can you click on the link above and you'll see also those other videos about these other uh, Airbus corporate jets and that that are out there. So it really does depend on what you're aiming for. Now, the other factor which uh, I haven't mentioned yet is also landing performance. Now, the landing performance on the Global 7500 is very, very good. It needs less runway than a BBJ. So that gives you more airports to be able to land at. And that's another factor you need to consider um, when you're going to be purchasing your aircraft. So that's really the comparison uh, between, uh, you know, buying a VVIP airliner or buying a larger private jet. Now, of course, if you want to get specific, I do recommend you ping me an email and I'll schedule you in for a call. The first call is free and I'll ask you lots of questions about your business and your needs and the markets that you're in or whatever. And we'll try and figure out what the best solution is for your business. There is no right or wrong answer in this. You can't just say the BBJ is the best or the ACJ is the best because it really does depend on who's asking the question and what the needs are of the person asking the question. And that's really it on this episode of BizJet TV. If you haven't looked at the video on the Airbus corporate jet, I encourage you to have a look at that one. Also have a look at the one on the Global 7500 and uh, otherwise just you know look at the uh, playlist here of all the various different aeroplanes and I'm sure you'll have fun having a look at that and being educated and if you've got any more questions just ping me an email and I'll see what I can do. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to BizJet TV I encourage you to subscribe to this channel give us a thumbs up comment below and also check soon the merch store will be launching we were hoping to launch the other day we're a bit late here in designing the merch but the merch store will be launched very shortly we'll have mugs caps t-shirts uh, all sorts of stuff for you with BizJet TV and on another another fancy things to do with the private jet industry and that's all from Fabrizio Poli on BizJet TV and I'll see you on the next one